at your instep is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello, and welcome to Now You're In Step. Uh, my name is Morgan, I'm here with Mike. Hello! And we have another uh, fun-filled episode for you folks this week. Uh, this is on the, the, the eve of the eve of my uh, vacation uh, to, to Florida to go see Harry Potter World, which will be quite magical. Um, now, if you're thinking to yourself, didn't Mike and Morgan talk about going to Florida for Harry Potter World just like a few months ago on this cast? We did, and Morgan's bougie as hell. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Uh, my uh, um, you know lifestyle is uh, high class, and uh, I don't know what to tell you. That's just how I choose to live my life. Definitely the song Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous popped in my head, and I realized that you probably have listened to that song so much that you know a lot of the lyrics. I probably know all of them. If you yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, Good Charlotte uh, was my very first concert experience as a freshman of high school, so, you know, don't worry about that. I definitely was down with the 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 good charlotte <laughs> that good good charlotte <laughs> <laughs> that good, that good good charlotte you are correct man if they had just named themselves good good charlotte i i bet they would have lasted a lot longer I mean, probably uh i'm starting a new band that yeah it's a cover band <laughs> of good charlotte. Good, it's good, called, charlotte it's called good good charlotte <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I like how it implies that like we're playing good charlotte songs but like better than they did yeah because we're, we're just, good good charlotte we're just good good we're that good good charlotte <laughs> Uh, but we have a, a few things to talk about. Normally, this would you know, be our, our Palooza episode, Palooza. But, but due to a little bit of a time crunch and availability, you know, we, we're going to do a little bit of a truncated one. Uh, but I think it's going to be a little bit of an interesting take, and then hopefully uh, in the future we can actually do a full-blown one. But uh, I, I hope you like what we are, are going to do on this podcast. Uh, and then we have um, our community topics to actually talk about a little bit beforehand. So uh, let's let's just jump right into it. So. Um, in case you didn't know, uh, Worlds did happen o- over the weekend, so the you know the, the world champion was crowned. Um, so uh, congratulations to Javier Dominguez uh, for for winning the tournament. Um, un- unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, a lot of the, the the actual thing that we should be you know happy about about you know Javier winning was was kind of overshadowed by a couple of things that happened during the tournament. Um, one of those being jerry thompson protesting it so on friday morning uh on on reddit he actually made a thread and said my name is jerry thompson and i am uh pro you know professional magic player and i am uh, sitting out of the uh world's uh tournament and uh this was huge this was a a massive deal um because something he said that he's you know refusing to play and this is something that has never happened you know before we've never seen people voluntarily you know uh not play at a a high profile like one of the the high pro the highest profile tournaments you could possibly play in probably the winner this got a hundred thousand dollars thousand dollars and there's only 24 players so he literally like forewent a one in 24 chance of winning or i guess one in yeah yeah 24 so that's uh it's impressive. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, in the actual Reddit thread, he listed all the reasons uh, why he was going through it and protesting. And some of them, obviously, are things that we have personally talked about on this podcast, or um, you've probably heard from other various places. And um, this was this was a, a, a wild thing to to kind of see. And you know, realistically, uh, I think personally. Uh, I, I, I completely agree with, you know, Jerry's stance and wanting things to change for the professional player. Um, and, you know, you really, I, I think that uh, actions you know, speak louder than words. And he definitely took action on his convictions um, to, to sit out and really stand with the, the you know, the, the player base, the professional player base and, and try to use his platform to make a change. And I, I think that, if you're a you know professional magic player, that you have to you know respect that to, to some degree. That he's trying, he's he's taken he's taken an L to to make things better for for everyone that that either is on the train uh, or for the people that want to make this you know their their job and and fulfill you know their their dream of being a pro magic player. 
and making that feasible to to for people to do because you know realistically you, you know being a competitive player of a game whether that be an actual sport or you know something like a um, online game or something like that it, you know, only a few people get to do that and that it's probably a lot of people's dreams though so for people to have a dream that is already defective by nature just isn't to, to me it just isn't fair or feasible so i'm uh, i think that this is a very bold move and a very um a very uh you know smart i think it's a very smart move to get eyes on the actual because th- this wasn't just like talked about in our actual community like a lot of other you know gaming outlets actually picked yeah like kotaku ran about an it. article and yeah so it gets a lot of eyes on it and seeing like uh i imagine that all the people that like play competitive like league of legends or dota or like counter-strike and stuff like that are just laughing just laughing at, at the magic community <laughs> being like do it. we we have like million dollar prize pools for our high-end tournaments and it's like you can't even come close to that you've been around for you know 25 years it's just like yeah it's 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 something yeah it, it seems like this way i hope i guess i can hope this is a breaking point Watsy's response to it was pretty tepid uh, and then they 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 did have they did talk about it a little bit and then they kind of ignored it yeah. and I saw some really weird stuff on social media like I, I I won't say specific names but like I'm friends with some of the you know you know on like Facebook with some of the the people who were, do you know coverage for these events and that sort of stuff and when people were saying like oh cover Jerry or like this is like this there were like Watsi representatives or people who work adjacent to Watsi who are like hey this isn't the time for that or like why are you doing this here like you got super defensive about it which I think is like the worst take. Right, like, just like, I don't even ask about this. Why would you do that? This is disrespectful. Because I think the whole point is that like Jerry success, you know, suggesting that all of this is disrespectful. And I think like discourse is what he's looking for. So like snapping at people, just it just seemed weird. Um, yeah, we'll see if Watsy does anything because of it. Um, it, you know, I, I, I again, I, I do nothing but respect respect Jerry. I think like when you look at that Twitter, for it, it isn't right now. It's now the third, but the for the most part of the weekend the highest comment on this thread was and this is how i found out the world started today yeah which is the funniest thing in the world but the stuff he mentions like you know we talked about it last week you know they played Kaladesh standard oh guess what almost oh, what 13 of the 24 decks were black red aggro uh, it was like 56 fi- percent uh, yeah of the decks were black red like this format rotates now in two weeks like who cares why would you show this they you know, they, they drafted dominaria which again one of my favorite sets of all time yeah but like the team series played Guilds of Ravnica on Sunday. Like, why, why wouldn't you just let them... It, it, it just... All of this is bad. And he, and he goes into his discussion of... Like, all of his points are salient, and, and you definitely should take a look at them. And I think that if you are wondering, are, you know, are Jerry's motivations pure? Like, I think you should be paying attention to what he's done for the last two years now. You know, the guy wins a Pro Tour and, and sells all of his stuff so he can donate it to charity. Like, the man has now multiple times put his money where his mouth is. And I, I think it's time... I hope it's time that Watsy does, but I think it's time we as a player base listen to, because yeah. you know we, we have we have this. We were talking to microphones right now. Some number of you <laughs> are listening. Uh, you know, we've I think we've made it fairly clear that we stand there. And I think some people criticize Jerry for saying his first point was like the living wage thing, but at the end of the day, like, you, if you want to have a pro circuit, and Watsy obviously still wants to have a pro circuit, then like he, you, you got to start by making it an actual incentive to be a pro, and. For years it hasn't been. For years now it's gotten less and less to be. I mean, we, we we added two more people to the Hall of Fame, and the Hall of Fame keeps players who don't actually ride the train like in around. It, it is so weird to me that they the Hall of Fame players literally can just go play in the Pro Tour with their with their appearance, you know, and all that stuff for that, and never have to worry about anything else. So why would you make that people who have stopped playing the game easier for them to come back into the game. But then that goes back into the whole, like, as he mentioned, like the, the silver showcase and these kinds of things. Like at the end of the day, you're just, yo, know, you're just lying. You know, Watsy's just lying if they're saying they're supporting pros. So, um, his stuff about coverage, I think was, uh, you know, on the nose, you know, it, it's been a couple years now, but we, we had Cedric Phillips on this podcast and we asked him point blank, what, what did he think that was, you know, that magic could do to become an esport, And he talked about, you know, the, get, getting these large sponsorships, doing these things, and that was years ago. You know what I mean? And like SCG has tried to do it. SCG is Ultimate Guard. You know yeah. I mean? And they've reformatted it to try trying to you know, you know stay you know as effective. And like Watts, you're you know, I will say Watsy's coverage compared to Star City's coverage is just continually a joke. It just has been forever, and it's that's sad. And and I know that there's a lot of people who suggest that like 
you know, this kind of criticism like hurts the people who work in the production of it and this and that. It's like, well, you know what? It's a team effort. And at some point, if you're just going to keep putting on the same show over and over again, uh, you've messed up. So, yeah. um, good on them. I wasn't really planning on watching much of Worlds. Now I got to feel proud of myself for not watching yeah. Worlds. I, I, I wasn't planning on watching it just for the sheer fact that I have no interest in anything that what was, was going on. What was I going to gain from it? Zero things. Like, nothing. Um, it, it, the, the format is old and stale. And, like, you, you could make the argument that... You know, you are watching probably some like some of the best, if not the best, p- players of current Magic competing for this you know huge prize pool. But it's just like you still have to consider content, and like the content of watching Standard as it is stands right now, not not appealing, super not appealing. And like uh, I'm not gonna watch Dominaria drafts. Uh, I, I'm just it's just not gonna be my thing. So I uh, I, I definitely you know. And more on the, you know, I, I side with Jerry on this whole situation. But I think, like, we've made that pretty clear. All, all of Jerry's points are feel like points that we've either made or agreed with someone else making uh, on previous podcasts. So it's uh, it's not really shocking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. One, well, that's thing I do want to mention. This is a, a good point that was brought up. So one of the things that Jerry talked about is how, like, you should use the pros and make the storylines. Yeah. And, like, this happened concurrently with coverage, specifically uh, Riley. I'm going to forget his last name now. Uh Riley Knight. Yeah, who I really like. I think is a great commentator. Yeah. But he has a tendency to just, like, use, like, shorthand ways to refer to players. So he kept just referring to Javier Dominguez as the Spaniard over and over again. Like, it's the Spaniard, the Spaniard, the Spaniard. It's like, Javier Dominguez, n- no offense to the man, is, is at a disadvantage for name recognition in, in, in you know, Magic Gathering. And then... <laughs> As he's winning the tournament, they won't use his name. Yeah, and then he took a picture of his swag. <laughs> they spelled his name <laughs> with a Q instead of a G. They sure did. Uh, Dominguez. Uh, <laughs> Dominguez. <laughs> and, um, and it was just like the perfect, like the perfect, like exclamation point to the end of it. Like, you don't care. You you don't care about these people. Yeah. So it's it was pretty poor. And you could say, oh well, that's just a typo, but it's like. It was only 24 of them, man. Yeah, you, you know what? <laughs> you weren't mass producing these things. No, nope, very specialized, it turns out. <laughs> turns uh, out you could really just hand some that, that off to someone and be like, hey, can you proofread this to make sure? <laughs> this, hey, is, I know I get real confused sometimes. Which way does the little thing go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But. So. Yeah. yeah, that 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 was you know that was kind of the the, the big thing um, with the with the Uh There was also a, a, a late stage disqualification by Ken Yukihiro, which is I I think it's it's less the, of a story. I, I think like the disqualification is is valid um, for I, I what agree happened. With that, but I don't I don't really have any worries about the player. No, that makes sense. You know, he made a lapse in judgment. He didn't call a judge the second he drew a cyborg card. He waited a turn. And he admitted to being, you know, like he should have just immediately called. So yep. he wasn't getting an advantage off of it. It was a diamond mare that he drew, but yeah. he got nervous. And, you know, at that level of competition, you have to do it. Have to call a judge. Yep. So. And obviously in those sort of situations, it's definitely there's a difference between calling a judge immediately and calling a judge when a turn cycle has already passed. Right. It's, just, it's a huge difference. And then deal. you it's may not difference. think that's a the huge difference, but it, it is. Uh, so if that ever happens to you, suck it up and call a judge. Yeah. Immediately, as soon as it happens, I, I've had to do it multiple times where I just go and I just sigh really heavily. <laughs> I just, like, why? Oh, I messed up. Uh, <laughs> I done did a bad. But yeah, that was the other sort of big thing to come out of the uh, the, the world, other than, of course, our, our champion, Javier Dominguez. I mean, Dominguez. Sorry. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, I, Awful. I just, be better, I wizard. I just I can't believe it. Just like the just Spaniard. Just be better. Dominguez. <laughs> Jesus. Who played in your tournament? Do you even know? Do, yeah. The only one you know for Were sure. Were you? Did. did you know what's happening? The only one for you for sure know didn't play in that tournament is Jerry Thompson. Jerry Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so uh, we, we did allude to the uh, the, the team championship uh, that did happen that did was allowed to play with the, you know, the not the newest set, but the, the newest set coming out, I guess. It's not n- new yet. <laughs> I don't know, um, uh, but it was that that tournament was taken down by Team Ultimate Guard. Um, so it was uh, 
Huey, Owen, Duke, uh, Paul Riesel, Andrew Cuneo, and uh, of course... <laughs> Finksel. <laughs> you put Finksel yeah, here. I don't know about who about that is. I think it was supposed to be Finkel. Um, I wish I could say that was purposely like a joke. But yeah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It was As we type in fast. Um, uh, so, thought, I will say, if you're like, oh, see, everyone does it. Yeah, but I didn't print a shirt for <laughs> get... a possible world champion Correct. and send it to them. Yeah, this, this is an oopsie that only like we saw. Uh, not something that was on a, like a permanent a, garment. It's almost like there's a professional editing process after whatever level this is. <laughs> it's not professional, <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, man. But congrats to uh, Team Ultimate Guard on their uh, well-earned victory. And then lastly, uh, something that's happening today, currently uh, downloading on Mike's computer, is the update uh, the, to Arena. So Magic Arena is now in open beta. So anyone can go in and, and sign up and, and start playing. And it's important to note that the, the open beta process, after it hits you know version 1.0 or the, the final release uh, of the, the software, uh, you there, there won't be a reset. So anything that you earn in the open beta, you will be able to keep. So feel free to spend your money on it if that's something that you want to do and experience. Or uh, don't. <laughs> or don't if you don't want to. Um, it, it, it's definitely something that I want to take a little bit more time into actually investing in. Um, I, I think like there, there's been a, a decent amount of hype coming into this open beta. And this is how you're going to have a lot more eyes that are on it um, to actually you know, sort of kick the tires and make sure that, you know, this the, the final product of whatever this is that comes out is, you know, better, better than it is right now. Um, and realistically, um, I'll be perfectly honest. I don't really know where it is right now. You know, I, I, I want to know though. So that's why I'm going to, uh, try to, uh, at, at least do something daily, um, as, as humanly possible with arena. I want to, I want to be, uh, a learned person on it. to be an arena boy. I want to, I want to be an arena, one of them arena boys. Like no uh -huh. one ever was. And, uh, I, I just want to make sure that if I have an opinion on it, that it's, you know, Grounded in something. I mean, I, I'm downloading it. They're offering me free Planeswalkers to download it. So if that economy matters, I guess I'll take them. Uh, I haven't played it in a while. I was I, it left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. The first two the first two rounds I played in the you know the closed beta. Um, I'll give it another try. I, I appreciated the push they're doing. I appreciated the um, the release trailer that with Day Nine and with uh, Danny Trejo. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was at least funny and sort of different. Um, yeah. I still don't know how much this is going to appeal to me. And I think like I, there is a, uh, I will refrain from using the person's name because this person was also, uh, streaming, uh, for, <laughs> for Watsi, uh, but, uh, suggested that, uh, essentially, um, they didn't like arena, even though they were about to stream the, the open beta, uh, because, uh, it's not magic. And it's, and I still agree with how that, that feels that like, I, I, I will give another chance to play it some more, but coming out of the closed beta, I know that really hadn't changed. And a lot yeah. of players, you know, had people who play competitively had a frustration with that. And that at the end of the day, magic online for all the people who get frustrated with it is, is a, is essentially a simulation. Whereas arena is aiming to be like a video game to some extent, you know, a mix of like duels and magic. And, um, it's hard to say that they'll ever have the full magic experience on arena, the way it just currently is designed. So if you're okay with that, and you, again, if you're a little more casual and you're just looking for a mobile product, then if the you know, arena appeals to you and then eventually someday you get it on your phone, that makes total sense to me. But like, if I want to play magic at home, I, I still don't see Arena replacing Magic Online until it has to, and then it probably still won't. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, again, I, it just finished downloading for me. Yeah, it's loading um, up. I'm going to give it another... Ooh, what language? Oh, French. I do like Deutsch. Oh, uh, you can do Deutsch. Okay, you can do challenge mode. A challenge mode. <laughs> put, it, put it in a different language. Uh, Italiano would be cool. At least yeah. I'd feel classy while I was That's doing true. it. But um, it, it's just something that I, I know that it's obviously... It, you know, it's obviously going to be different than what I'm used to with Magic Online. Um, but I know for a fact that I haven't done any drafts on it. And I, that, that's, I think that's where I want to start, is I want to be like, I'm going to start drafting on this and see how I feel about that. I don't think that Constructed, uh, at this point in time, is up to where I want it to be to find a satisfactory Magic experience. So... Um, with that being the case, I am uh, definitely going to start there and kind of, you know, talk about it, my experience, maybe, you know, run, like every once in a while, you know, do an update about how I feel about it and then, you know, just kind of go from there. So, um, 
the last thing I wanted to talk about, because this also involves the, you know, online uh, uh, digital product, um, is the uh, portal uh, software. So, you know that that uh, Magic Online, not Magic Online, but the, the, the Magic app that was supposed to be... Um, uh, uh, releasing uh, sometime in the future, it's supposed to allow you to you know run your own self tournaments and stuff like you're that. Get advertisements for in guilds of Ravnica. You, yes, uh, it turns out that that product is not yet ready, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so while you will have it advertised to you on your, the side of your boxes and uh, in your packs and your ad cards, uh, unfortunately, it will. Uh, you'll have to wait on it a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So, uh, kind of is what it is. And uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you an update on Magic Portal. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be everything for our um, current. Uh, that, that's going to be everything for uh, uh, our community topics. Uh, so before we jump into that, definitely wanted to give a shout out to Comic Town. Uh, they of course uh, are doing Guilds of Ravnica pre-release this weekend. So uh, if you are interested in uh, signing up at Comic Town, please get in contact with them. You can find out uh, the details of the event as well as their contact, contact information by checking them out on Facebook. So go to Comic Town, do a search for Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. So the next thing we're going to do is our our mini Palooza. So I I want to I want to submit the name. Pizzuli. But that's nothing. Like, that could be offensive to someone. You don't know. What? what? I don't know what a Pizzuli is. I, it's a tiny Pizzula. <laughs> Pizzul- Palooza. That's not right. Yeah, exactly. Fine, just give me a Paloozie. Pal- okay. Paloozie. I don't know why I said Pizzuli. I don't know why. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I want I want a Pizzuki so bad. <laughs> I mean, uh, it doesn't. Paloozie. My apologies. All right. A Paloozie is... is- Maybe better. He's just a, it's just like a little guy. It's a yeah. little, little Pelosi. Uh, so what? Okay, now it sounds like Nancy Pelosi. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I don't you're done. Are you? Yeah. Um, so what we have um, uh, done here is kind of gone through the, the spoiler and really taken the cards that uh, appeal to us and kind of ranked them from one to twenty. So we're going to talk about twenty cards. And this is a hard and fast list. The, yeah, this is what we have very minimal sort of uh, experience in the standard format. And that's kind of where a lot of our evaluations are, are grounded is, is probably standard um, when it comes to this. Uh, we do have a few like uh, honorable mentions that we definitely want to uh, to shout out uh, before we get started here, though. Um, so definitely wanted to talk about uh, uh, I want to give a shout out to the new uh uh, cancel with upside variant. Uh, I do think like that card is obviously we're already replacing a card that we had stated previously, uh, but is is pretty good. So that's sinister sabotage. It's one uh, generic blue blue, and it's just counter target spell and surveil one. And I think uh, like surveil in general, we yeah you know, we've already stated that it's a fairly um, you know powerful mechanic. Potentially better than the scry, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but I think like this, this counter spell is you're you're obviously going to see uh, a lot of it. Um, and I also wanted to I also want to give a shout out to another counter spell that we're actually getting back into standard. Um, disdainful stroke. Disdainful stroke. And the disdainful stroke when it was last in standard uh, was very powerful and sometimes seen you know modern play. So uh, don't don't discount like the, it, it might be it should be a sideboard card, a sideboard player, but. It's a very versatile, um, you know, a very nice, not versatile, but very nice counterspell to actually have in the format to uh, to keep, you know, some big things, some big things that we're probably going to talk about, you know, in check. Um, uh, then uh, Sinister Sabotage is the other one. Uh, another one that we want to talk about as far as, like, a uh, honorable mention. Um, you know, thought Thoughtseize with, with Upside is, yeah, a, a pretty good card. Um, and I know that a lot of people uh, are trying to make these sort of blue black mid range decks exist, and that this is one of the, the, the cards that you know maybe more of a, a sideboard card than a main deck card, but you know potentially serviceable. Are you, are you thought sure erasure? Thought erasure. Oh so, yeah, that's the card I'm talking about. I don't said know what I said. Sabotage. No, no, no. Thought erasure is the card <laughs> I'm talking about. Sorry about that. I was like looking back and forth. I'm like, no. I think I just actually had a Mandela effect like happen like right in front of me. Like I don't know what's going on. So yeah, uh, thought yeah, thought erasure is the actual card. Um, what do you have uh, an honorable mention you can throw out? Uh, I, I guess I I will I'll go a simple, uh, a simple little card. Uh, I'll mention two two simple little cards that okay. are on commons that are close. Uh, I want to mention Chemistry's Insight. 
uh, which is inspiration essentially. So you know, three generic kind of blue, instant draw two cards, but it has jump start. Uh, and this card's pretty exciting. I think like I was considering it for Battle Box, and I was like, man, this card's just too good. <laughs> it's just yeah, too yeah, good for it, Battle it's Box. very good. Um, if you've never played with Deep Analysis. It's kind of scary. Now, obviously, Deep Analysis had mana reduction on it, and you know if you discarded it, but getting two of these for one card, like you know, you, you're probably going to draw an extra land off of maybe your first one. Yeah, so, like who cares? You just t- you know toss the land. Uh, I, I still think that like people are going to feel the like Glimmer of Genius being gone because you got to see so many cards. Yeah, but this is that kind of card, just like thought you know like uh, or think twice was. And I know we have a new variant to that too, but it's not quite as good. But like nah. the idea that you can just cast this and it can just sit in your graveyard for a while. And then later you're just like, Oh, by the way, I still have this. Like that's the power of any flashback variant. And, uh, I think it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, just a strike, uh, which is a red and a white for an instant, uh, target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Uh, you know, we've had this effect multiple times before, but as a two minute instant, it's pretty good. Boros looks to be a pretty, uh, powerful color pair, but it's going to have a hard time dealing with bigger creatures, this card lets you do it. You know, one of yeah. the one of the uh, creatures we'll talk about in this list that happens to be a six six uh, in green is pretty important, and also for things like um, Lyra Dawnbringer, yeah, in the format. So uh, this is one of those like you know it may, you know it's going to be a role player, but when you see it, it's going to be very good. Yeah, this is like the the, the Boros Terminate. This yeah, is, <laughs> this it really is, is. This is like the best you're probably going to get in that color combination for like hardcore creature removal. It not killing Shalai is going to be a problem. Very, but, very much um, so. I've already done some testing, and then that card comes into play. I look at Justice Strike and go, hmm. Mm. I don't like that. Yeah. The Shalai is just like such such a good magic card. It really is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a lot of problems i think in standard uh, you know shalai in you know song of frailies and what we have in selesna could be a stew going yeah, yeah it could be for could sure be stew. definitely gonna be a brawl stew oh yeah of course i have of shauna course. but it might change it, oh okay so fair enough um so uh, there are plenty of other like uh, commons that we could really mention and uh, this this set's gonna be very impactful just by its its nature oh, hold the phone i'm very foolish we did all of these topics. I know we're in the you know the you know Palooza. We talked last episode about the Bravitational. Yeah, I need Jevron to know I won. Oh yeah, I, I, I totally, Un, I, unsurprisingly, I totally won that the thing. finals was Mike and Keller, the two people that have been the most <laughs> invested in this format, and, and created the event, and created the entire event. You know what? If there was like a ruling body over the event that we could appeal to, to like possibly look into some sort of collusion, where yeah, we all there was no collusion. <laughs> we, we all got together on a Saturday and wasted a lot of time and effort we, just to crown we you this, two. We do this. With First Cube. and second. You, how often do you do it with Cube? Where you just get together to crown me there too. So let's just be honest. Oh, wow. so let's all to celebrate my greatness. Uh, we played. Uh, we played five great games, and uh, I took it on the fifth game with a kick fight with fire. Jai would be proud. So that's that's true. Anyways, back to our list. I'm so sorry. I just realized. Yeah. I, I know you were all waiting. You were like you turn this episode on. Wait, you're like I need to know who it. won the brawl invitational. And gosh, here I was. Also, uh, Morgan fixed the spelling of the brawl invitational on our Discord channel, which was a big victory for me. That's true. I it's did. It's a big win. Just just for him. Uh, so l- let's let's start with our actual uh, list here of sweet cards that we like from the set from, you know, I, I 1 to us, 20. Try to give us some cool like sound effects for it. Just like, number 20. Uh, number 20 is going to be uh, Integrity Intervention. Uh, so this is the uncommon Boros split card. Uh, the, the one side is a hybrid mana of red and white for a plus 2, plus 2. Uh, is that that's an instant speed, right? Oh, these are both instant, instant speed. speed. Yes. And then the other half is four mana, so red, white, two generic for a lightning helix. Uh, this card, obviously, uh, inside of the Boros archetype, uh, is going to be a role player. Like it's it's probably a three to four in every Boros deck. I would have to imagine just for the sheer versatility of it. It's great with mentor. Uh, the the front half of it is, and the back half is great for ending games. <laughs> like uh, Sometimes you'll kill a creature with it, which you may or may not like feel great about, but likely if you're killing a creature, it's to again, end, end a game of some persuasion. So uh, I, I think uh, you know, this is probably in the front running of like one of the, the if not the best uh, uncommon uh, split card of the cycle. Um, I know that they're all actually varying levels of, of good, uh, I would say. But um, I think this and the Celeste new one are probably two of the best. I think a lot of people are uh, were initially pretty low on Flower and Flourish. Uh, but 
a lot of people in testing for standard have kind of turned around on it. I, I think that um, is as annoying as energy was um, into uh, attuned with Aether sort of reminded people of how how you can build a mana base when you have a card that you could just do that with. Yeah. And like a tune saw so much play because it had essentially the secret second mode, which was powering up our creatures. Well, you know, flower doesn't have a secret second mode. It has a legitimate, it's second legitimate mode. second mode. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think uh, the thing with integrity intervention is that um, one, as you said, it works so well with mentor. One of the cards on this list we'll talk about um, happens to have a lot of keyword abilities, including double strike and trample or a pump spell. You know, that two becomes four very quickly or, or even more depending on you know what the setup is. Um, and, and I will say, you know, as a person who's piloted a number of Boros decks, and I, and I think I said when we first talked about this card how, like, I was A-OK playing, like, War Leader's Helix at four. Now, granted, four damage is a lot different than three, but one of the, like, the unsung modes of that card is, like, how it lets you, you know, I, I've said before, like, how I look at the game, like, having cards that can trans, like, can be transformative based on the board state are so important. And, like, yeah, like... You know, lightning helix to the face is just lethal. Lightning helix to a creature can like clear the blockers too. But like lightning helix during your opponent's combat when you're in a tight race, totally changes the yeah. landscape. Can you know, that three life changes how quickly they can kill you? That tempo blowout like on the backside, like literally stapled to a card that would already you know, is already playable technically, um, makes us a real winner. Yeah, so. I agree with that. Um. Uh, next up at 19. Number 19. Uh, we have Blood Operative. Uh, so uh, Blood Operative is uh, Black Black 1 for a 3-1 with Lifelink. And then it has uh, some other text. And I <laughs> believe I don't have it pulled up, but I believe it re... Oh, no, I have it right here. Um, uh, it says, when Blood Operative enters the battlefield, uh, you may exile a target card from a graveyard. So, But not necessarily like hugely impactful, but we have... Some some things that obviously interact with the graveyard still that are going to be in standard, uh, uh, jump start being being a big one. But um, uh, so minor graveyard interaction. Uh, but it says whenever you surveil, if blood operative is in your graveyard, you may pay three life. If you do, uh, return blood operative to your hand. So this works if you surveil and then you bin it <laughs> in that surveil. Which is pretty good. Um, and a recursive creature that you could buy back that has a minor effect even when it enters the battlefield. And with something like Lifelink, uh, it, while you do have to pay life to get it back, um, you know, we're entering a, for, enter, entering a format that has, you know, sh that's going to have shock lands in it. And they'll, they'll, they have a real cost. So you definitely have to find ways to maybe subvert that cost. And um, while I don't think that Blood Operative is necessarily like a busted card, it's a card that can kind of just sit around and do nothing until it does does something. And I, I, I always, ne I never want to under uh, like overlook as just a, a recursive creature that you can get back for no mana, which uh, is important. I think the key here too is that there's a lot of very playable good surveil cards. Half yeah. of, half of our honorable mentions were cards that just had surveil tacked onto regular effects you'd already play. Right. So like you you know normally this kind of effect is questionable when you have to do a lot of extra work. When you don't have to do a lot of extra work, then there it is. How good a 3-1 in the format is, is really, you know, because the mana restriction is there. How good a 3-1 is in the format is going to depend on how good this card is. You know, if the format's all Goblin Chain Whirlers, then I don't want to see this card. Yeah. But, you know, if you're talking about, like, long control games, like, or, or, or like, grindy mid-range matchups, yeah, I agree. I want this card that keeps coming back whenever I get to do something that's already good. So, yep. uh, it reminds me a little bit of, like, Icarid, if that makes sense, and it's yes. sort of set up as a 3-1, and, like, card has seen play in pretty much every format. So, I... Yes, this is less powerful than that, but I said reminds me. <laughs> this is this is how it, that's how it works. It reminds me. All right, number eighteen, uh, divine visitation. So this is a uh, uh, mythic enchantment from the set. It is what five mana, so it's four generic and a white uh, for like I said, enchantment. And it re what is it? I believe it's is uh, it white white? As we're scrolling around, I believe it is. All right. But it's five mana. Three generic white white. And three generic Jeez, white white. Morgan, just make Sorry. it up as you go. Um, uh, it, and this card reads, whenever a token... Uh, is it a creature token or a token? Uh, it's, if, if one or more creature tokens okay. enter the battlefield. Um, they enter the battlefield as 4-4 four, four angels with flying instead. And, and vigilance. And vigilance. They're, they're, they're full yeah, on Sarah angels. Sarah angels. Yeah. Full on Sarah angels over here. Uh, so, uh, you know, last format we had um, the token duplicator... Uh, uh pr pr profane prof no pr yeah is it profane procession no that's not it it's something procession 
Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have that card, but that card's rot- rotating out with uh, Ammon Ket. Uh, well, this card doesn't double... Yeah, it technically doesn't double your art, art, uh, anointed, your to- procession. anointed procession. Does it double your tokens? Uh, depending on what they are, it, it might double or triple their or quadruple, quadruple their, their power. power. Yeah. Uh, I guess it can't triple their power. Power. There's no halvesies <laughs> or thirdsies or anything. So you know, quadruple or double their, their power. Um, so, which can be very, very powerful depending on what you're doing with tokens. We're going to talk about another card that generates just a bunch of tokens at instant speed. Uh, which, you know, if, if that's what you are trying to do, this card could be very powerful. It is definitely a five mana enchantment that doesn't necessarily do anything immediately. Um, and right now, we don't have a planeswalker that immediately makes a token, not like a in, creature uh... token. Not in those colors. I mean, like no, because like a Johnny has to ultimate to get into right. the tokens. Um, There's no like plus one or plus, tick up or tick down. Uh, no, I don't think so. See, I'd like this card. I, this card, it, it, it can be powerful. I would definitely like this card that a lot better. Could you imagine if we just had like uh, red, white, Hawley? Makes uh, dinos. Tokens. Oh yeah. Okay. You know what? That makes it a little bit better. You're not getting. You're you're not getting like a big upgrade on power necessarily, but being making it a flyer with vigilance, vigilance is way better yeah. than that dinosaur. So, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, now, now that we found it, now, we've, now we we found the another, token maker. Another five drop. <laughs> we found yeah, we found two five drops that we can play in our deck. Uh, but uh, there there is definitely some. Uh, I mean, I just want to play this with Legion's Landing. Oh, yeah, yeah, of you course. Flip, you flip that bad boy, and you're just like, oh, here's a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that has a similar effect. I was thinking of something like, you know, if we... Could you imagine this card with, like, like Gideon, Ally, Zendikar? Can you imagine, like, just how, like, awful that, that interaction <laughs> would be? Like, turn 4 Gideon, turn 5 this, like, make a 4-4, four, four, go? Ugh. So, I imagine that as long as this card is in the format, we, we might not see a whole lot of Planeswalkers that actually make creature tokens. Uh, not based in white. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Uh, we will see. Uh, I will say it's even interesting. Some people pointed out if you look at uh, Selesna as a whole, it doesn't actually make that many tokens. Mm. Uh, whereas last time it was populate, so it was all yes. tokens. Uh, and that may, it's probably not just because of this card, but it definitely is obvious that it's a little yeah. less. Um, I will say so. Comparing this to Anointed Procession, you know, Anointed Procession, those tokens X were were pretty popular, and then Chain Roller was printed, and it doesn't matter how many you make when they're all X ones. This is a little bit different, whereas in they are you know once you have this in play, then they are chain whirler proof, uh, which makes this at least a little more interesting yeah. uh, in the current you know standard format. I do think that we lost a lot. We are losing a lot of the token synergy. We, we, we certainly are, but you know we, we have a lot of you know this is a, we're, we're in the small we're going to be in the smallest part of the format for the format the format eh? <laughs> um, and don't forget we have some really good sapperling makers in Dominaria. That's true. Like instant speed too. Like what's the there's a four mana one that makes three one one sapperlings at instant speed. Yeah. Follow, follow that up. You know, like let's do it like that, and uh, all of a sudden yeah. get twelve power in play. Yeah, I guess that's that, that's true. Um, that there is there there's something there. So it, it very possibly, you know, granted you have to have this card in play. It's it's a kind of build around, but um, you know, it, it's powerful. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah, I agree. So. Um, all right, number seventeen. Uh, number seventeen is uh, Ral. Is it Ral Zarek? Is it Viceroy or just Ral? Is it Viceroy? Anyway, the the Ral Zarek planeswalker of the set. Um, it's, it's just Ral. It's just Ral. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm not necessarily like that high on, on this guy, but he is three generic blue red for a uh, Ral Zarek planeswalker, uh, and he's got some text on him. And I'm gonna pull him up real quick. He's got five loyalty. Okay, thank uh, you. Plus one is look at the top two cards of your library. You can put one into your hand, and one into your graveyard. Minus three is deal X damage to a creature, uh, where X is equal to instant uh, instant sorceries in your graveyard or in exile that you control. Or you own, I should say, how the phrasing works. And then minus eight is uh, you get an emblem with. I'm trying to read it because I'm far away from it. Uh, you get an emblem with. Sorry, I'm get I'm getting I there. Know. Now we sound terrible. Uh, whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, uh, this emblem deals four damage to any target. Yeah. So and and you draw two cards. And you draw two cards. Yeah, which is pretty um, good. So that's like uh, I want to say what with prophetic bolt. Uh, no, it's a little bit better. Well, so Prophetic Bolt lets you look at the top four and then choose one. This okay. There's no selection, but two. It's similar, yes. Yes, okay. Like, I, that's, I know that's what it was hearkening back to. We're not going to measure it by its ultimate. So we, we talked before already, this is five mana, tick up, draw a card, tick down, deal damage. And the problem is, is that most of the five mana ones that tick down to kill a creature always do it. And Ral is at a weird disadvantage because he does it. Now, I will say, 
Ral as a planeswalker um, does stack well, if that makes sense. Like multiple copies of Ral across a long game um, will make that ability much better. Yeah, and and that's important to note. Um, this feels a lot like um, the Jace from the Innistrad block fell, like Shadows of Innistrad. Yeah. Okay. And, no, I like that. And, uh, and and that was very good, Jace. Now, granted. Um, scrying and drawing was very good but this is pretty similar to that yeah you get to see the same number of cards and it fuels your graveyard so yeah some things like jumpstart like eh, I, you're, you're right. you know it could even be you know drawing like similar to drawing too that being said i i think that is it overall looks kind of weak and i and i don't know what the payoff is here i will say grixis control strikes me as a place you could look at and then once we get the rest of the shock lands like hallow oh hallow fountains like you know, obviously it's fighting for space with like Teferi, but I could definitely see decks that the control decks that are using this as a build around because yeah. you know, just taking up and drawing a card is always going to be good. Um, but as far as like building an is it archetype with Ral, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't really see it right now. Yeah. Number sixteen. Number sixteen. That is uh, none other than the card that makes a lot of tokens, which is March of the Multitudes. March of the Multitudes is is pretty easy. Uh, it is uh, what white white green X. <laughs> I have it sitting here. I don't know. Oh no! Uh, no, you don't. Um, uh, and it is an instant speed, and it says <laughs> make. <laughs> uh, yeah, white white green X. Yeah, I got it. Okay, it has convoke, and it's make X one one white sorcerer creature tokens uh, with life, like at its instant speed. So, um, again, we we've talked about this card before. Uh, it's an instant speed token maker. Uh, the tokens it makes are are pretty good. Uh, obviously it, it costs more than just like white X or, you know, what have you. But, um, I, I do think like this, this card is, is probably good enough to see play, especially at instant speed. Um, so I, I, I like it a lot. It's, you know, I, I don't know how many you will want be wanting to play, uh, probably like one or two in your Celestia decks, but, um, it, I, I don't think you need to do any other like tomfoolery. You don't need to play the, the enchantment or anything like that for for this to be good. Like just, it, it, it's good as it is. And um, it, what's nice is you know the, the the first one helps you cast the second one, and like they they kind of feed off each other. So I I do I do like that aspect of it, but I think I think this card is pretty powerful. Yeah, I think the problem with that is that you I don't know how many of these you can feasibly put into a deck. Yeah. Um, like I said, one or two. Yeah, but yeah, no, for sure this this card is definitely powerful. You know, like again, it, it does work well with divine visitation as we as we suggested. Um, and I, I think that the fact that this card can come out of nowhere. Yo, know, to just like, oh, I'll tap my guys and a turn to do this, and you're like, oh, wait, what? And like, swing races. I think is going to be interesting. I think I think it's been hard in the past to make these cards seem like they are for creature decks. You know, when you think about Secure the Waste or even like White Sun Zenith. Yeah. Uh, they have felt like control cards because you know Secure the Waste was just so efficient. White Sun Zenith shuffled back in, so you only could, you only had to play one. Uh, this though, with Convoke, does really suggest like, hey, your you creature should probably deck. have creatures. Yeah. yeah, your creature deck should play this. So not that it, that will always be the case, but yeah. All right, number fifteen. Uh, we have Lazav, the Multifarious. Uh, this is a, a legendary uh, creature shapeshifter for uh, a black and a green. Not a black and a green, a black and, and a blue. Excuse me, I don't know why I said green. He, he's <laughs> Golgari now. He's so tricky. He's switched sides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, for a uh, so it's a, a one three. It says uh, when uh, this creature enters the battlefield, surveil one, uh, which is you know perfectly fine. Uh, and it says, uh, pay X, and then Lazav uh, becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with converted mana cost of X, except its um, name is Lazav, the Multifarious. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has this ability. So he's one of the faceless men. Uh, he can definitely change to whatever face you got in your graveyard. So, you know, whatever face is collected. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I think this card I, I definitely like. Um, it's definitely very powerful. Um, it can do a lot of things that are pretty good, um, and that surveil will definitely allow you to to do. So maybe you are you know dumping something into uh, your your graveyard to copy later for for protection. So um, I, I, what the thing I think I like about Guilds of Ravnica overall, uh, for the most part, uh, is everything is very synergistic, and I think that really shines through. Uh, I think the only thing that uh, kind of falls short a little bit is Golgari. And I think that is because that causes the, like pushing overgrowth uh, undergrowth too hard really um, 
messes with your grave, like how powerful the graveyard is. And I think yeah. they're, I think they're really wary about that. So I think that's the only reason why, um, I think that's the, the only reason why we're, um, we, we don't see that mechanic kind of shine through as much. Um, and there's always an opportunity for them to, to change that in the, in the future, how powerful undergrowth really becomes. But Lazav is is just so, um, uh, it's just it feels really really good with all the things you want to be doing in um, uh, the Demir Guild, uh, putting things in your graveyard, surveilling, and then like copying your powerful creature that you have in there, and just like doing good things and being able to keep doing it. And it comes out early, and it being like a one three, like two mana one three is just perfectly fine as a, as like a body for a, a slower, more mid rangey deck. You know, it's going to be able to block a, a few things, and then you know be effective still yeah I, I think like again the most appealing thing to me here is that like it get lazav gets to feel like shifty because you know again we're used to these effects like e even like mythic spoilers telling me like hey don't you remember demir doppelganger well yeah the exile the card from your graveyard and the zav just not having to do that the zav just being able to become a copy of that means that you can play back and forth with what it becomes a copy of it's mana intensive yeah but i think that's really cool um, and, and like makes sense. Like the Lazav is supposed to be this like very hard to find master of the Demir. Like he should be able to like one second be this and then turn his you know turn and become this other thing. Uh, and, and the fact that like yo know, you could it's like oh maybe I need like this keyword ability or maybe you're trying to destroy target creature at power four or greater and suddenly I don't have that anymore. You know like, right. that I think is a really cool thing. And, I, and again I don't know how effective that'll be, but I think in standard, as you mentioned, it being a two mana one three that just has some pretty good value i think is um i think is interesting so yeah i mean like i i think that there are definitely um you know some instances where you would consider playing like uh, you know you have to evaluate well what's the cost i would want to have like a, a card that was like surveil like what what's my lowest like cost for surveil and um i, I mean lazav is uh, two mana sorcery surveil one you know probably not worth a card but you know you, you get a body along with it which helps out a lot and uh, uh, you know this card scales well with the game which I think is is the thing it has like going for it um, so I, I definitely I definitely can see the appeal of it and um, I, I'm not going to be surprised when it, it shows up in, in standard a little bit alright number 14 uh, we have Tristani Discordant uh, so this is our uh, Celestia Guild leader. Um, not 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 talking, not talking to, not returning each other's calls. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ooh, uh, sorry guys. Uh, but this is uh, a five cover mana cost cards, uh, three generic green white for a one four uh, legendary creature dryad. It says other creatures you control get plus one plus one, so it's an anthem. It says whatever. Um, this creature enters the battlefield, create two one one white soldiers creature tokens with. You know, lifelink. So, you know, comes in with five power for five mana. Um, so you're, you're definitely getting your, your your money's worth that way. It's spread across a couple of, uh, of bodies. Um, and it says, at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. So, not, not super relevant. Um, we, we do have a, a couple of, um, you know, we, we do definitely have a couple of effects that can steal um, your creatures. Uh, a couple of uh, we have a uh, en enchanting melody, uh, something something melody that's like green, blue blue X take creature yes, with converted mana exactly cost, it. and then we have um, impulse clutches. We yes. have yeah. You know, there's a, there's a uh, one of these split cards here has it. Again, it, it's not going to matter very much um, if you were taking like. I guess I guess even the nice thing is if you really take Tristani, it goes back. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, the, I mean, if it does come up, like you could tell tell a cool story, <laughs> right? But um, I, I like this card uh, just the sheer fact that we we already know like the um, the Regal Caracal. Like Regal Caracal was was definitely a playable card, um, and this is is doing a pretty good Regal Caracal Im impression in all honesty. So. If if you know if that card was playable, then I, I have high hopes for for Tristani Discord. And again, anthems are are just good. Uh, giving all your creatures plus one plus one, especially when they're tokens, especially when we have Chain Whirler in the, in the field, um, is is pretty good. And 
you know, this this is playing the in, in the right colors to get it down a little bit earlier, a little bit ahead of schedule, you know, with the help of a like a Lana War Elf or something like that. Yeah, and I uh, should again point out this plays well with Divine Visitation. Oh, very much so. Yeah, uh, and March the Multitudes because yeah. you know this is a five drop that essentially works as a three mana ramp into March the Multitudes. Right, you know. So, um, I I'm not as high on Tristani. Uh, it's good, I think, but. I think this, what Selesna is doing, I, Tristani's going to have to fight to be the five drop that I want to play there. So, yeah. um, but I think it will definitely see some play. And as you said, yeah, it doesn't good enough regal Caracol impersonation that like there's decks that you would just put it in against. And well, now here's four power of life. Like, yeah. and you just got to deal with it. So, uh, 13. Oh, sorry. Number 13. I almost forgot my voice there. Yeah. Gosh. Geez. Uh, we have ritual of suit or soot. Suit? Ritual of Suits. It's, yeah. <laughs> suit up. Put, put a 1-1 one, one suit enchantment on all creatures. No. Um, uh, Ritual of Suit. So this is two generic black black for a sorcery, and it's destroy all uh, creatures of career co mana cost three or less. Uh, so similar to uh, Consume the Meek, um, but no no life gain. Uh, and, and one mana less. And one mana less. Um uh, yeah, I mean, the, this card is what a lot of the uh, you know slower control decks want. They they want to have access to a a sweeper that gets rid of all the the tiny itty bitty stuff, especially with tokens running around, especially with Boros being very aggressive and having a lot of low CMC creatures. You know, this is the catch up card. This is the card that's going to let you two, three, four, five for one someone and get back into the game that you're you're going to be able to win. Right. Um. And I, I think this is. You know, um, short of like Languish was like the last card I really feel that we got that was the like good in that slot. Like I think a lot of the ones that we had at four mana, like Yeheni's expertise was was close, but minus three, minus three just wasn't good enough. This feels this feels like it's gonna be good enough. I I don't disagree. Um, I, I think language is, is still overall like better. Like minus four, minus four is like, man, they, they, in that format was was real, real, real good uh, at four mana. So, um, yeah, but your siege rhino survived. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like again, you can definitely construct a deck where this is a, a one sided wrath um, for for sure. And a lot of the uh, you know good um, uh, creatures that like one of the best creatures in the set dodges this a hundred percent. So that's that's important to note. Um, and anytime you can make a, a, a plague wind uh, be be pretty you know, playable in your deck is is pretty good. So yeah. obviously uh, with standard we do have a lot of different CMCs, but uh, when when this is what you want, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good. Number twelve. Uh, number twelve, we have Pelt Collector. Uh, so this is a uh, one. Uh, green, so one green, one one, and it is um, sort of like uh, what's the the human news uh, uh, experiment? Experiment one. Yeah, experiment one. So it's uh, whenever a creature of greater power enters the battle, greater power than pelt collector enters the battlefield, put a one one uh, counter on pelt collector, and it ha if it has three or more plus one plus one counters, it has trample, and then whenever a creature of more power leaves the battlefield. Yeah, or is it, is it dies? Okay, it enters dies. Or dies. Enters or dies. Put a one-one counter on Pelt Collector. So, uh, I can say firsthand, uh, playing a little bit with this card, card's good. Yeah, it, it's certainly good, especially when you're considering where the green deck goes, um, because you have things like Threshing Bronton, which pumps this. You have all, all of your like next plays <laughs> pump it. <laughs> I mean, you're fight. You got your, and it, but you also have like unlike Experiment One. You know, you have some things in that deck that are so powerful for the mana cost. You know, uh, the what's the five four? Uh, uh, champion. Yeah, Steel yeah. Leaf champion. Steel Leaf champion, and of course we have the 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 hex roof, you know, four mana guy that we're talking about, and also Vine Mare even too. They have yeah. just like these high power levels that can really keep this going. And it, you know, when this thing becomes a four four, when you look at some of the removal in the format, it it becomes a problem, and you're not really paying anything for that. You're just playing a one one and trying to curve out. Yeah, exactly. So. You're you're playing this into your your branch walker or your your elf. Um. Uh, the two three elf, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, thorn, yeah. I'm so sorry. We're bad with names. Today. Please forgive us. Yeah, it's bad. Well, it's these are all like standard relevant cards, and we just we're just very out of practice in standard. You're not wrong. Um. So, uh, this this is the card that everyone was like, oh no no, mon mono green is still going to be a thing. Like this is the card that that convinced everyone that it's still like going to be a relevant, um, 
uh, thing in the format, which should say a lot of it. So uh, this this card, you could even like potentially fight for it to be a little bit higher um, in your personal evaluations, just for the sheer fact that it is definitely one of the cards that makes mono green, uh, mono green. Uh, but it, it's powerful. Don't underestimate the the power of this card. Uh, it definitely demands a, an answer uh, when it hits the battlefield. So number eleven. Oh, I'm taking this one. Uh, so you can be my guest. Yeah, you've been bogarting all the cards, and that's okay. But I need to talk about the Legion War Boss. Uh, Legion War Boss, we talked about a little bit. It's two generic and a red for a 2-2 two, two, uh, Goblin Soldier. Uh, has Mentor, and it says the beginning of combat on your on your turn. Make a 1-1 one, one Goblin with haste. Uh, that creature must attack this turn if able. So um, we talked about how, like, unlike Rabble Master, you know, the, your, your goblin, Goblins don't pump this guy. But the Mentor on his does pump your goblins, and all of your goblins don't have to attack that turn, which is pretty big when you're talking about, one, a number of the Boros creatures being goblins, and some of the goblins we have in standard. You don't have to now, you know, kamikaze your goblins. Right. Um, had a chance to start doing some testing with this card, and I, it's pretty good. Um, I think when I first saw the card, I would have, like, thought this was going to be top, like, five in the set. It's dropped down a little bit, not, not, not just because, like, how the set looks, but also because there's actually just a couple of better mentor cards yeah. uh, which is surprising but I still think when you look at how some of these formats play out we just talked about like Ritual of Soot for example and like one of the ways that you can recover from that is by playing a, you know, an army in a can and uh, Legion War Boss is going to be that bill or is going to fit that bill I think mm -hmm. it's good in the decks that want to sort of curve out uh, with mentor but I think it's also going to be one of those cards just like you see it in modern where decks that don't have a lot of creatures suddenly have Legion War Boss out of the sideboard and uh, if you boarded out all your removal oops yeah you're, so, you're in for a, a bit of a hurt then. Yeah, so I, I think this card's going to be a uh, definite... Uh, I'll, I'll call it a role player in the format. Maybe not... I think it won't be as good as Rabble Master was one because people so severely misevaluated Rabble Master in the beginning yeah. that the card just like ran people over. Um, but also, uh, so like, people are more prepared now. But two, just because the format's a little bit different. For sure. So, But it's a very good card. All right. All right, now we're we're heading in the top ten territory, so we got some. These are these are heavy hitters. I think I think I'm pretty confident in all the ones that we have on here. I agree, though I will say this first one may surprise some people. Uh, number ten, and I appreciate your nickname. Yeah, this is a, a Swift Blade Vindicator or, or Swift Blade Vinny. <laughs> hey, it's Swift Blade Vinny over here. Uh, so this is a a two mana uh, one one that just has a bunch of text on it. It has uh, double strike, vigilance, and trample. Um, this card is like where you want to put all your one one counters, yeah, all of them. Yeah, it's like please teach me. <laughs> Hopefully, I need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I need I need input, Stephanie. I, I need <laughs> input. <laughs> I I have a lot of training in how to hit things. Uh, very yeah. very hard twice. I'm just real small. <laughs> I'm just so tiny. I just I'm a I'm a wily little guy. Wiry, wiry this is Steve, little guy. Steve Rogers pre yes. transformation. I need that super soldier serum. Please <laughs> inject me with that serum. I gots to punch some Nazis. Got to, gots to, gots to. Um, but yeah, this card is this card's a beating, and um, it gets out of hand like it just escalates so quickly. And like we were talking about with uh, intervention, like just just being able to do that is pretty good with this card. Or is it integrity or it, it, yeah, integrity, integrity? Is that the part of it? Yes. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this, so this card gets, as a 1-1, one, one, it's really easy to get the first counter on it. Oh, for sure. With cards like Tajik, it's not hard to get the third counter on it. and once you, Or the second counter, <laughs> I should say. And once you have the second counter on it, this thing really starts to rumble just about everything. Yeah. Um, it, it sets up attacks that are good against Planeswalkers. It deals a ton of damage out of nowhere. Uh, and then one of the cards I've been testing a lot is, uh, is Johnny, uh, the, the, the something of Tyrants. I can't uh, remember. Adversary Thank of Tyrants. You. Uh, which is a card that I, I was, uh, you know... Didn't like its place when it was first printed, but you know we said before. I, I said before, like maybe something could change with that. And mentor is the mechanic that causes that card to be pretty good. And when you can pump your mentor creatures and also pump this, and then the mentor creature, like, if you're getting into the four or five counter territory, you've won the game. Yeah, <laughs> it, thing, it, it just, just cascades so well. I trample is like so surprising on this card. I think like, and, and I, I'll even say this: like vigilance is surprising on this card. Like, it, it just does so much for the deck. And I think like. When I was first looking at the Boros decks, I just we just talked about Legion War Boss. I was like ranking that card very high. This card, like I after doing some testing, I was like, oh no, this is the card that has to stay alive. Like this is the card that does it. This is the card is why like I've been testing Adam at Will out of the sideboard because like you're just like not this thing not dying when your opponent wants you to 
is the blowout of the century. And why, again, you mentioned Yo Integrity, why that card, I think, is Yo surprisingly so effective. Because, you know, if this thing's a 2 2 and they're like, well, I'll lightning strike it, and you're like, well, now it's a 4 4, take 8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oops. <laughs> so real, real good. Uh, it, you know, this is the kind of card that's going to make your opponent play differently with removal. Uh, and you know why I still think that Legion War Boss is so important because so the cards like this are going to be must kills. Yeah. In, in, in Boros, and then your other cards can go a little, you know, a little buck wild. So uh, again, you may be surprised to see this here, but if you look at the text on this card, it, you know, it's just it's just it's a tornado waiting to be pushed a direction. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I, I think like the. The the idea like with with a Johnny just like whew, man it's just it's just real good with that card. It, it, also, it's a two drop. So a Johnny's like, wait, did you die? Come back, get back, come back, my friend. <laughs> uh, I, so now I really wish his name was Switchblade Vinny, and then he could have been a greaser man. Yeah, say <laughs> so he's my buddy over here, Switchblade Vinny. Hey, hey, I got double strike, and I sing real good. <laughs> All right, uh, number nine. Uh, we we got that. Favorite tune. Everyone's been singing these Dream days. Dream Eater. I'm sorry if I just ruined your hearing tonight. <laughs> it's Dream Eater. Uh, it's a uh, uh, six mana, so four generic blue, blue, four, four, three. It's got flash and flying. It's a nightmare sphinx. And yes, this art description, very accurate. Oh, no, yeah, real good. Uh, so it says uh, when a Dream Eater enters the battlefield, surreal four. Uh, when you do, uh, you may return target uh, non land permanent. An opponent controls to its owner's hand. Um, so I, I think a lot of people were like, ah, you know, this card, like, it's it's kind of got like a, a real derpy body. Not you know, four three is like meh, but it's mythic, and like uh, it's mythic because this card is like busto and limited, like for for sure. But it looks bad, but is mythic. So it has like like this is one of the I, I think like. Um, like Saffron Olive or someone on Twitter was like, it, it or was replying to Saffron or someone was replying to Saffron Olive, but like, oh, it looks bad, but it's mythic. I better take a look at this. And uh, I just really feel like this card is such a huge like tempo swing. I don't know if it has an immediate home, but it, it just like it feels it feels like this is this is good. Like this is a good card. Yeah, like, Surveil I, Four feels like real good. I, I totally agree with that. Six mana is a lot to make it seem like a natural home. Like. This isn't really a control card because that three toughness is just too easy to interact with. Yeah. Um, but whatever deck does get there, and it's a, maybe it's not, it may not be this first standard format. You know, it, it, we could be, you know, it could see play maybe in Azorius or even like we don't know what the Simic's doing. Like these, you know, blue green like flash has been a thing before. Yeah. But I, I don't disagree. Like the amount of value you get here, like if you if you get to flash this in, bounce a threat, block something for value, and surveil four. Oh my gosh! Like like. Just like, whew, I, I'm gonna take a take a moment, take a little yeah, breath. Like, th there's just a bunch of dumb stuff, like, especially non land permanent. Non land permanent is is huge for for this card. It definitely means a lot because we have a lot of removal that's going to be relevant in the format that is permanent. You know, that's enchantment based, um, such as like Conclave Tribunal, for example. Right. Oh, you're saying like freeing a creature mid combat or at the end of turn is a big deal. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Very much so. It's weird. Huh. Especially like. Uh, I mean, as dumb as this may sound, like, maybe it's something that has a pretty good edge of the battlefield ability, like a Ravenous Chupacabra or something like that. Huh. I, I mean, like, there, there, there are a lot of, like, uh, obviously very, very good scenario scenarios you could construct with this card. But I think, like, on, on its rate, even if you're just, like, bouncing a, a creature, maybe something that's been mentored a lot, or a Pelt Collector that's pretty big, or, you know, something relevant. Even, even if you're just doing that, card's still pretty buff rate uh, yeah i think like people forget how good bounce effects like that can be obviously we had reflector mage fairly recently <laughs> yeah it, remember like it's you know annoying instant speed reflector mage <laughs> continues to be yeah all I right mean, quite honestly like we see it now in humans with vile right like yeah like this this isn't reflector mage it, it, maybe this is how much reflector mage should have cost <laughs> <laughs> potentially yes it should have been mythic and cost six mana and it might still have a seat in place so uh <laughs> yeah. there you go uh number eight uh, number eight, it's the it's the big boy himself. It's the the Nullhide Ferox. Uh, so this is a uh, four mana six six. It's a green green two uh, for a beast. It's a beast, right? It is a beast. I'm just making sure. Don't wanna don't wanna get the the In wrong fact, creature actually, type. I was just gonna look this up. It looks a lot like the the beast from the east. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is an old Goosebumps book. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I yeah. Um, so it it has hexproof. 
And she, yeah, pretty good. And um, it, it says you can't play non-creature spells. Well, guess what? If, if this is in your deck, you weren't planning on playing a lot of those in the first place. So not, not yeah, it does actually look a lot like from the Beast from the East. <laughs> um, you're, you're not planning on playing a, a lot of those in, in the first place. So pro probably not much of a downside. And then uh, it has an activated ability, which is uh, too generic. And it's a null high ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. So they'll lose that, can't play non-creature spells, but also uh, will we'll lose the hex proof ability. And it says, uh, if a spell or ability an opponent controls uh, causes you to discard null high ferox, put it into your battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. So Ravenous, you know, the, the Luxodon slash, uh, well, not Ravenous, Baloth, um, Lux on Smiter, but Lux on Smiter. But what's the, the Bayloth? The, the the gain four life Bayloth. Oh, it's not Ravenous. It's um. I know. I want to say Ravenous Bayloth. The Ravenous Bayloth is the onslaught one. That's yeah. that's like my buddy. Yeah. Uh, I do not remember. Obstinate. Right. Thank you. Obstinate Bayloth. <laughs> you were so stubborn to remember. Yeah. So like, the, don't forget that like one of the most hyped cards from um, M19 is Nicobolus, the Ravager. Or, which makes you discard a card, makes your opponent discard a card. Uh, you do not want them to discard this card. <laughs> How awkward would it be if you wanted to cast a spell, and then your opponent made you discard a card, and you discarded this, and then you couldn't cast the spell anymore? Yeah. You're like, all right, I'm going to cast this Assassin's Trophy at the end of the turn. Oh, no. Oh, no. I forgot. <laughs> I did a better thing, I think, maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. It should be both. I mean, you have to choose. You don't... I, I mean, I guess if, like, this... this in Assassin's Trophy, are the only last two cards in your hand. Like, I, I guess I'm not gonna like lose my <laughs> no, Assassin's no, no, Trophy. No, sure. So, no, I agree. Um, but yeah, no, obviously Nickel Bolts does make this uh, a thing uh, because you know there are that card running around to make you discard a card. I think just this being a six six for four is just a big deal. Um, there are obviously ways to deal with it in standard. We have some Death Touch creatures that are still fairly relevant. Um, and I we talked about like Swift Justice, for example, being a really solid answer to this. Um, but, the, you know, the green deck doesn't need a lot of work to get a lot of power into play. And, you know, again, those green decks don't tend to care. It kind of makes me think of, um, uh, what's his name? The guy that you would take six damage if you cast creature or non-creature spells. Oh, you're talking about, uh, freaking the... We are the worst today. I'm Bor so Borigmos. Sorry. Not Bor Borigmos. No? It's the, it's the guild champion uh, from Dragon's Maze. It's not Bor Borigmos. It's the 6-6. Six, six, um, it can block... Is it oh, Rukthar. There you go. Uh, I was like, it's not Borgmos. I know it's not. Um, sort of like like this idea that green creatures on Ravnica sometimes just don't want you casting spells. It's like, no, only us. <laughs> only creatures. So, new new standard combo. Uh, um, what you do is you play uh, Sorcerer Spyglass. Name Null Hide Ferox. Never loses Hexproof. Boom. Done. We did it. <laughs> And you can never cast spells? Doesn't matter. All well, creatures. I, I think it does if you're putting a bunch of spells in your deck like Sorcerer's Spyglass and then you can't cast them later. Don't worry about it. I, I'm going to worry about it. <laughs> I think it's bad. It's one uh, of those... What you do is you trick your opponent into naming your Nolite Ferox. Mm. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven. Uh, number seven is probably... What is going to make you buy a lot of boxes of Guilds of Ravnica? All the Shocklands you're yeah. going to be opening. So we have a, uh, uh, you know, all we have five of the Shocklands. All the guilds that are going to obviously be in Guilds of Ravnica, and um, yeah, some of them are are, are ones that are actually, I, I think like all of them are actually ones that are modern relevant for the for the most part. Uh, so, uh, so, I mean, some of them are varying uh, levels of popularity, but I mean, like you're you're gonna want them all. Temple uh, Gardens at a pretty, it's pretty low right now. Yeah, uh, but, but. Um, you're, you're gonna definitely want all of them. So definitely pick up all of them that you you can, um, and that they're always gonna be playable in standard, and they're always gonna be playable in modern. Yeah, so be excited because like Sacred Foundry specifically is one that was creeping up definitively in price. Yeah, so uh, the, you know you, with, might, you might be like, oh, Steam Vents or like Watergate, but it's actually it's actually Sacred Foundry. Yeah, so. that, that has been like I mean, it's always in Burn, it's always in Marty Pyromancer and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, the, the, I mean, there's the, these are. You know the closest we'll probably ever get to actual duels um, uh, that uh, are, are you know obviously fetchable, and um, yeah, they're just good. Just, yeah, yeah it, it also helps that we have both. We have all ten check lands currently in standard. Yes. So um, these turn all all of them on. So our mana yep. bases are going to be pretty sweet once yes. we get all of these. Very very nice. Number six. Uh, number six, we have uh, the the one, the only, the the Swiss Army Knight slices dices. Uh, it's Knight of Autumn. 
So it's uh, one green white for a Dryad Knight. It's a 2-1, and it says when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Uh, put two plus one plus one counters on Knight of Autumn. Uh, destroy targets, artifact, or enchantment, or gain four life. Uh, this card does it all. Uh, I'm far more excited for this card for modern than I am in standard. Um, I think in standard is going to be uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, it's it, if you are in 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 white and green, it, you know, it's already better than a reclamation sage for the most part, unless you are specifically playing like elves. Um, but uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of this card because it does uh, like. You like in a lot of decks you already want to play a kitchen finks and you already want to play a reclamation sage, um, if you are any sort of like green white creature deck, uh, or even like yeah if you're already like some some green white x creature deck or just a creature deck in general, um, so being able to like sort of staple those two cards together, uh, is it's pretty fantastic. It frees up a lot of sideboard slots. Like that's a, that's important. Um, so uh, I'm a big fan. I'm gonna be, be playing this card in humans uh, a whole heck of a lot because we're already playing two reclamation sages. So it's like. Just sign me up, and um, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, I have not too much to add there. I think it does have a lot of standard relevance, just because we have a lot of these sagas, which are going to still be pretty good. Yep, the Eldest Reborn being specific, but also like History Banalia. Yeah. Uh, so this being able to come down and hit those is pretty great. It also plays well with History Banalia. Cause yeah, because it's night. Yeah, it's the best. Uh, the gain for claws and standard seems like I'm not sure, but again, if there's something super aggressive, like your three drop coming down. And essentially, you know, gaining for life is like drawing a card against red a lot of times, and then also being able to block is super relevant. So, yeah, wherever this card sees play, it's going to it's going to do a lot of things. Um, no, we're getting to the, to the five, the final yeah, five. Top five. Number five, Johnny. Uh, Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> uh, number five is Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. Um, and this is a four mana creature, uh, two generic uh, with uh, red and white. It's a two five. And it has Mentor. And then it says at the beginning of uh, your combat, yeah, combat on your uh, st- turn. Yes. Um, that's what? Up to one target creature. creature. You oh, yeah, up to gets, one. I don't know if it's... It gets plus two plus zero on ten a turn. If it's red, it gains trample. If it's white, it gains vigilance. Hey, if it's both, it's both. Yeah. Uh, also, really flies, if you didn't know, because she's an angel. Yeah, she's, she's the one, one, of them, one of them flying angels that they have. <laughs> not... Suppose one of them, like, swimming angels? <laughs> or not, like, non-flying angels. <laughs> I think, there's, angels. I think there's one angel in magic that doesn't have flying. I was going to say, I think I think angels that don't have flying are now called, at least the, like historically, are called demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I honestly expected you to want to, to push this card a little bit higher. Um, um, only because, only not higher because it, it's awkward in a couple of ways. Uh, so, so it being a two, five is pretty great. Um, you know, it's very relevant because it gets found off things like militia bugler. Yeah. Um, it's ability affecting the turn. It comes into play is huge because it lets things like, uh, you know, <laughs> switch master Vinny to, uh, <laughs> to attack with a little bit of a, a push. Yeah. Um, but be, you know, in combat, it, especially on blocking, like it can block for days, but it doesn't really you know, do much for you. And, um, multiples are, are, less relevant than it with other cards, if that makes sense. And specifically, I know the Boros card that's higher on this list. Yeah. Um, so, while I think Aurelia is very powerful, I think, at least in my own testing, with the Johnny testing so well, uh, Aurelia is supportive, if but not really the reason to play the archetype, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Um, so, so, card's still very good. Don't get me wrong. Hey, card's still very yeah, good. she can't target herself in combat. So. Yeah, she can. She can. She gets to attack as a 4-5 or five with Vigilance. It's really good, but it, what it does to affect the board, what comes into play, is so dependent on the board itself that you're paying 4 mana in your aggro deck for, let's be honest, not a Phoenix that comes back not a Chandra, not you know, like yeah. It, so when you're comparing it to other four drops we've had recently, it, it, she's she's good. She's good. Yeah. So like again, we're putting her number five. You say you want to go higher, like she's number five. Like she's yeah, doing yeah. fine. Um, and I, I think like Lyra is, it also is like a feel bad. It, it really is being a five five looking at your two five that only can attack as a four five. Yeah. So um, number four. Uh, number four, uh, I think might surprise a lot of people, but it's uh, Raska Golgari Queen. Uh, it didn't surprise Vraska, let me tell you that. Did no. not surprise her at all. Uh, so Vraska is two generic black green for a uh, Vraska Planeswalker. She has four loyalty and comes in and can tick up four two. It says you may sacrifice another permanent. Uh, if you do, gain one life and draw a card. Um, and then she has a minus three. Uh, destroy target non-land permanent uh, with converted mana cost three or less. 
And then uh, minus nine. Uh, you get an emblem with whenever a creature uh, you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. All your creatures become little tiny assassins. <laughs> um, now, I, I, was, I, I wasn't I was expecting this card to be very high up, um, in all honesty. It seemed like I, I really truly felt that both of the Planeswalkers in the set were kind of uh, close to being duds. Uh, like, not super impressive, but... You know, could show up here and there, and uh, I, 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 I feel like we have a, you know, a really good Vraska in the format already from from Ixalan. Um, but you said that you'd seen this card show up a couple times in your testing, and um, you were pretty impressed with it. Yeah, I, I think like when you compare like Vraska to like Ral, even in this set, that yeah. one mana is a huge deal, and that one mana on a color that gets to play land or elves is also a big deal. Yeah. Um, I guess that's true. At the end of the day, you have a four man of Raska that can start essentially at six loyalty. And you know, you don't want to judge by an ultimate, but like if you're coming down on an empty board and you're ticking up and maybe you're not sacrificing something, it doesn't matter. There's a huge threat to deal with. Um, if it's coming down on, on turn three or turn four, it's minus three is going to affect the board significantly. Uh, now, I think you have to build your deck for this, but the plus one gets incredibly powerful depending on what you're trying to do. Um, the versions I saw doing the best were playing things like Stitcher Supplier and uh, Charnel uh, Troll, which yeah. you didn't put on this list, but it's a powerful card, uh, and was just a way to sort of feed it through. And like, oh, well, you know what? I can't I can't exile any more creatures from my troll. Okay, I'm going to eat it and draw a card. And uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, Glow Spore Shaman being a part of these kind of builds as well. Uh, I think that... Vraska is going to be surprising, and one of those things that you're going to find hard to get off the board unless you have hard removal. Now, part of that is also the card we have in number one, so we'll talk about that. There is some hard removal for it, obviously, and we still have Vraska's Contempt, which is really weird because it's <laughs> going to keep killing Vraska's. <laughs> yeah, it's but, a, some weird like, self worth issues, Vraska. Work that out. But, like, yes, I agree. Vraska, Vraska Relic Seeker is also very good, but the difference between four mana and six mana, you know, in standard is so big. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, you, you've got to, you're going to have to, if you don't have an immediate way to get rid of this card, you're going to have to expend a lot of resources and they're just going to get a lot of value out of it. Yeah. So listen, they, they do work together because Raska Relic Seeker can make a, tre uh, make a, yeah, makes make treasures. a pirate, it makes, it makes treasures also makes a pirate and just like Vraska go queen could just eat that pirate. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> Hey, Hey Vraska, here's a pirate. Thanks, Fresca. I was hungry. I was hungry. I'm going to eat this fire. Get a life and draw a card. Also, here's some treasure, because you're a queen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to eat this treasure. <laughs> Get a life and draw a yeah. card. Vraska, you are the friend I've always wanted. Why, thank you, Vraska. Same. And Same. then, like, they hold hands, and somebody's fanfic is complete, so... <laughs> Um, the, the, oh, what, what, what was this pirate holding? Oh, it's a removal spell. How about that? <laughs> well, let, let, me, let me eat it and see what it tastes like. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That tastes like a trophy. <laughs> uh, number three. Number three, we have uh, Tajik. What's his honorific? Legion's Protector or something Legion's like that? Edge, Legion's Edge, because he's got a sparkly Edge. sword. He does. It's very. It's got sparklers in it. That's what it looks like. It looks like fireworks. It looks like um, like a pinwheel or something like that. Like you, he looks like Thanos just snapped his finger. Like yeah, <laughs> he's starting to. No spoilers. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Tajik Legion's End. One. Edge. Legion's Edge. <laughs> not End. Uh, edge. He's one. He's for you, too. Yeah. One. Um, uh, he's 3 CMC. One red white for a 3 2. He has Haste and Mentor. It says prevent all non combat damage that would be uh, dealt to other creatures you control. And uh, for a red and a white, you can activate an ability for, to give him first strike until end of turn. So this guy has like three relevant abilities and one ability you're probably never going to use. Which one's the one you're not going to use? Give it first strike. Uh, I've definitely done it. I, I'm, I'm not saying like that's not like the that's like the least relevant ability I think yeah. on him. Uh, Tajik is the legend you want to have a number of copies of, if not outright four. Yeah. Um, as you're curving through your mentor deck, the addition of haste onto a creature with mentor that has three power is so important. Because it gets to attack on three, obviously, but it also gets to pump something. And your best draws in your in your Boros or your know, Mentor style decks are going to involve Tajik every single time. Yeah. Um. So haste and Mentor, obviously, the two most important things. That third power is huge. 
Uh, and it's also why I think the first strike ability is actually more relevant than the other ability. Yeah. Because like you know that extra power lets it get through things. That last ability though is nothing to you know, sort of like you know you know scoff at because this means you can't like lightning strike other creatures like you have to kill the Tajik, which you might be trying to do anyways. But again, we've talked about how like things like Legion War Boss need a little bit of space. Well, now we have the cards to give it space. Yeah. It also does like there was a card that I didn't understand in the set, which was definitely Clarion. And um, you could deal three damage to each creature, or creatures you control gain lifelink, or both. I was like, why would I want both? Like, doesn't make. Th- oh, my creatures didn't die because of Tajik. Uh, so that's kind of cute, and sort of leads you to playing that card in the sideboard of the Boros deck. Mm. So um, yeah, Tajik is ahead of Aurelia, and like Tajik last time was terrible. Like it was like Battalion, the two-two Battalion that gets plus five, plus five, or something like that. Yeah, not nah, Tajik. And, and he himself was indestructible. It doesn't matter. Tajik hit the gym. He <laughs> lost indestructible, but he gained. Power? He, he protects everyone else yeah. now. Yeah, he, he his I guess most of his armor is indestructible. Now he's got like flamingo armor that's really cool. So But uh no, I think I think Tajik is sort of the exciting thing for Boros to put to really pull the mentor deck together that wanted that wanted a another exciting three drop and Tajik is it. So I, I agree with you there. I think like the the that man, that three power in mentor is like it's, it's a rough. sweet spot. It's a sweet spot. It's rough. Like you're like, um, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I've stabilized, and it's like Tajik attack you and mentor, and it's like, oh no, I'm dead. <laughs> just stone dead. Cool. Yep. yep. Just cool. I did it. Yeah. Like when you get to attack with two mentor creatures, and one of them is like, you get to like go down the line where Tajik's like, oh, I'll mentor this, and then like the war boss is like, oh, I'll mentor this goblin, and you're like, we're doing it. <laughs> we made a little waterfall. This is great. We're all learning. So number two. Uh, number two is. Doom Whisperer, three generic black black for a Nightmare Demon, which, yeah, you know, both creatures that are Nightmare uh, are definitely, like, re- they really, man, hit home runs. These are Nightmares. If you have never seen the Labyrinth where the where she falls down the hole with all the hands. <laughs> yeah, this is this is that on a creature. It's, it's not good. It's not, it's unpleasant to watch today. <laughs> uh, this is a flying, it has flying and trample, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. It has an activated ability. Um, uh, pay two life. Surveil two. Is that good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like uh, again, this is kind of why like you know blood operative just feels good because you don't have to pay mana for it. Paying paying life life is a resource, uh, and uh, guess what? It's a it it has been found to be a very powerful resource, uh, which is why when you look at modern, so many Phyrexian mana spells are banned <laughs> uh, because when you could just like pay two life for something. Uh, that that's fine. Like that's that's ideal. Like, um, so this is very powerful. Um, it, it, it is all upside, which is not something you typically see uh, with, with uh, you know uh, black creatures that are big. Uh, they typically have a downside of some persuasion. Um, and th- th- this card is all good. And um, I, I I would not be surprised to see it. You know, this is a a, gar- a card that I think goes hand in hand with something like Lazav. Yeah, because agreed. this is something that Lazav can copy from the graveyard and have all everything be enabled. It doesn't have to, you know, you don't lose out on an enter the battlefield ability or anything like that. It's just like, cool. I pay five mana and I have a doom whisperer now. Um, and, uh, it doesn't have what it, it could just attack. Yeah. Cause it can, <laughs> yeah, it can just go. Cause yeah, the, the yeah, this card, this card is very good. Um, and you know, obviously a lot of people are going to say like, ah, it doesn't, it, by its nature, doesn't have like an enter the battlefield ability, but so you can obviously surveil a bunch when when it's targeted and set up your your next turn. I think the people who aren't saying this is are forgetting how good a certain six six demon was the last time we had Ravnica, <laughs> uh, which was what Dessa. No, that's a, what was that name of that demon? You could ta- you could sack yeah. a creature to tap it, right? Yeah. And like that was a drawback. That was an actual drawback. Didn't matter. Dominated a format. This yeah. is better than that. On, on the call- back of like mono black. De- yeah, I think it's desecration demon. I don't remember, yeah, but... it doesn't matter. Uh, on, on the back of mono black being like you're, you're not one wrong. of the best, you're not wrong, the but best like, deck it could, in the format. You could have chose whatever else to be. It's like pseudo big creature finisher, and it, it was the six six because yeah, there was removal that dealt with it, but it, we didn't always have that clean removal. And right. Then, you know, and like this, this goes and finds the answer. Like like this goes and okay, you killed this one. Well, I'm going to make sure I have another threat. Yeah. And uh, that's a big deal. Yeah, I, I like where it's at. I, I definitely think, like, uh, as far as, like, mythics are concerned, like, th- this is obviously busted and limited and, and very powerful for the constructed format. 
All right, here we are. Yeah, the un- yeah, num- number one. Well, no, hold on. This is we. This is where we take a commercial break, and then we play a snippet of each song that was already in the countdown. No, everyone knows. It doesn't matter. Everyone knows what number one is. Number one. Number one is Assassin's Trophy. Come on, let's be real. This is <laughs> this card's busted. Um, uh, you know, obviously, the, this card is very similar to something like Path of Path of Exile. Uh, it's it's. Yeah, Path of Exile could destroy planeswalkers or yeah, lands or yeah or enchantments or anything or artifacts anything or boats <laughs> or boats yeah <laughs> um th- th- this card is going to be played in a lot of different formats it's definitely going to be played in standard definitely going to be played it's just everywhere it's just it's so versatile it it does it everything that you could ever want a removal spell to do the the downside is a quote unquote downside it's the same downside that Path to Exile has that doesn't slow it down that doesn't stop it from seeing play um. And um, the older, you know, you're, the the farther back you go in older formats, the less basic lands you typically see. So sometimes this is just like straight up better than Vin, you know Vindicate or something like that. I guess, I guess not. I guess it could never it could it could be Vindicate. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but I, I get better because it's cheaper. Yes, better because it's cheaper. There an we go. Instant. An, yeah, an instant. instant. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this card's. Too good. Yeah, uh, yeah I, like this card it, just, just feels like, like a like a card that we print to the modern magic, and yeah, here it is. No, but you're gonna see it in standard. And you're gonna be like, I don't like this. Yeah, I'm, I, I, so I still don't like it very much for standard, as far as like it's printing, just because like again, standard is the format where you can play larger things and, and not feel bad about and it, not feel super bad about it. Like efficient removal is fine, but like we saw a fatal push did, and the numbers it saw. Like when you print it, print that kind of efficient removal, you better have a format that can deal with it. And I'm just hoping that the format can deal with this card because as of right now, it's forty dollar, <laughs> like forty dollar yeah, doom rare. Play and, uh, yeah, so like so everyone that like hasn't signed up yet to you know play pre pre releases, just choose Golgari because like hey, you might get a foil one like why not roll Ooh. the roll the dice uh and you know just yeah i don't <laughs> just do it just do it there's i don't know what the i could see like, like this card is just busted I, I you know the thing that makes me the most disappointed is like i know this is probably not a very popular opinion uh but i think i'd be more okay with this card if we had like i just had like another hexproof creature of some persuasion. I don't think that's the answer to it. If you're going to create such an oppressive removal spell, like give us give us another blossoming defense. Like that's sure, what I've been looking for. Sure. You know what I mean? like, I, I, I'll uh, I'll concede to that point. Another like very cheap like pr- protection. Spell. I, I got to tell you, like we saw what Teferi can do in a format. Like I'm not upset to have more answers to cards like that. Yeah. But it just makes me wary to like when I look at some expensive cards. Like we you know, our number two card is very good, Doom Whisperer. But this is a card that could push it out. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that just like so, it just. I, I want to have this you know big finisher, but you're you're you know you're you're gaining four mana on me just by like well, I guess three mana excuse me on me just by removing it and it just feels bad. Like I get a basic land, but. So you know, hopefully in standard, there, there are going to be times where it matters to give your opponent a land, but. This card's yeah. very good. It yeah, just, most of the time. I I think like I, I am glad that it is. Um, green black because I think green black is probably the least aggressive that that you can build. There there are some, but I think you have to be so dirtily that you don't. I think of like if green black was like super aggressive, like this the, the, this card would be borderline bannable. Yeah, that's right. because like the more aggressive your deck can be, the better that this is. And like just for the sheer fact that the mono green deck is playing black just for four of these. Right, it's true. And that's scary. That's scary in all honesty. Could you imagine if Abzan Aggro right, oh, had, had this card? Well then, we would... That, card, that, that deck was disgusting. We would have a very disgusting format now, wouldn't yeah, we? we would. um, I just wanted to mention just a quick story thing with this. Uh, Esperia is, uh, is... Oh yeah, she gone. Yeah, she dead. She dead. Like, this is, this is her being turned to stone. Ostensibly dead, like, maybe... I don't know, like... The way they've described it is like Rask can turn her like stone ability off and on with her eyes. Like she just has, has to look a certain way. So maybe gotcha. she can just be like maybe like Jace would be like, "Come on now, Rask," and she'd be like, "Oh, okay." So like maybe she's born with it. Maybe you're stone now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. Uh, well, maybe they'll have like a soft, like a Final Fantasy, you know, thing. They'll just like throw one at her and be like, "Boom, boom, we're better now." <laughs> Uh, Maybe it's yeah. like Final Fantasy Nine, where they got to get the super soft so they can unpetrify. Oh yeah, maybe what's the space? Yeah, uh, and or maybe they just break the statue and they're trying to use a phoenix down, but it yeah. doesn't work. Oops. It, just, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> just rubbing feathers on someone. <laughs> <laughs> Be alive, please. please. 
Uh, uh, but th- this is important, I think, story-wise, because this is what creates a power vacuum for the Azorius and what may allow... Well, the says that in the card. Way to quote the flavor text. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, it may allow a, you know, devious planeswalker to step in and act as a bo- agent of Bolas. Mm. Maybe one Dovin Bond. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, this card's busted. Um, I, I, it's very good. Obviously, they're, they're, it, it is going to vary in power level depending on what you are you know, using it against. And some people may be able to, ta- may be able to take advantage of you giving them a land. Uh, again, the, the farther back you go in the format, so I think the more powerful this card has the potential to be. So, okay. Yeah, good. Uh, but I think like, you know, um, yeah, those are those are sort of our, our top 20 as they stand. Did we miss cards? <laughs> For sure. Oh, 100%. We need to talk a, little, a lot about um, some of the, the role player and commons that are they're going to be obviously very good. And, and some of the rares that honestly are going to be fairly good as well. I think overall, um, this set is, is, is a good set. Yeah, I'm really excited to draft it and, and get to play standard yeah. in a couple weeks. So. I, th- I think I'm there right there with you. Um, I, I feel like... It didn't. It wasn't going to take a lot to really impress us after M nineteen, um, and uh, I I was kind of wary about going back to Ravnica, um, and potentially being disappointed. Um, but I'm I'm pretty excited with what we've seen, and um, I, I'll, I'll have a good time with it. Like I said, it, you know, it's already on Magic Arena. It's already on Magic Online, technically as well. And um, I think like with you know the open beta rolling out, this rolling out, it's a good time to really play limited um in all honesty with with the set and this seems like a good set to give that a shot so i'm, I'm glad to have a a couple of avenues to actually do that and you know really get a, a better opinion on uh, what magic arena is is kind of like so I'm, I'm very excited for this set for for multiple different reasons so but that's going to be our, our our top 20 our uh our mini palooza um palooza i thought you i thought we were gonna go away from I'm that back on it you back on <laughs> I'm back on my BS. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's re- go into the wrap up. So, of course, again, we have pre releases this weekend. So, good luck to all of you uh, participating in your pre release. Um, we also are, are going to be having uh, Star City Games Columbus coming up here soon. So, um, you know, we will be in attendance. Uh, it's going to be a, a team classic at your end step uh, where it's going to be uh, me, Mike, and Jordan, a former co host of the show. And uh, we're we're all pretty excited. I think it's been a while since I've been to like a, a a bigger Magic tournament. It feels like I feel like Nationals was like the last time I've really been to something like sizable. Um, and uh, you know, Star City Games always knows how to bring a tournament to Columbus. And um, uh, team tournaments, uh, since it's been some time since I've had to play in one, feel it, it feels pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, I'm just glad I get to play standard. Yeah, uh, like I think that's the most my, exciting. All thing. my Boros friends have come back to me. It's come back, <laughs> it's, it, it's time. They're all here. <laughs> that's a that's a run back a, a pretty tired joke at this point in time. But yeah, <laughs> um, and yeah, I I I I, I'm, I know this set's going to be impactful. Like that's the best part about it is like it's going to be impactful for standard for sure, modern for sure, and then. Uh, I don't know about legacy. Legacy is, is is really hard to to change, but uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to play uh, with some new cards in Columbus. So uh, that's gonna be everything for us this week. Um, it, we do want, of course, uh, give a shout out uh, to a couple of different things. Um, if you do want to get it, reach out to us. We have a few ways you can do that. Uh, you can find us on Twitter uh, under your end step, and when you add us, it's at your end step. Uh, we also have a Facebook account. Uh, you can do a quick search for at your end step on Facebook and find us through that. And email address at your end step at gmail.com. Um, if you are listening to us via one of your Apple products, feel free to leave us a review and a rating. Um, really helps get some visibility on the show and gets new listeners. Um, if you're listening to us via MTG Cast, feel free to um, check out some of the other shows available on that lovely service. Uh, we also have a Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash at your NSEP. Um, we uh, do, uh, are, are going to be doing a, a giveaway here soon for a couple of play mats that we have that are um, in the inversion of the at your NSEP logo. Um, so once uh, those get out, we'll have one for Twitter and then one exclusively for our patrons. And um, we just want to you know really thank our patrons uh, for helping us out, get the show up here and, uh, you know, really uh, make sure that everything stays up and running. Um, but that's going to be everything for us this week. We will catch you next time. You have a great one. Bye.